Danny, what the hell is going on? What have you done to our mother? I found her near my house in a terrible state, exhausted and broken. She told me you kicked her out of the house and wouldn't even let her in to gather her belongings. What's the truth, Danny? Hey, Alyssa. Is this really how you choose to greet your own brother? After all this time, your first reaction is to complain about me? Are you serious? And the truth is exactly what you heard from that old woman. Is it really that difficult to comprehend? What were you thinking? Subjecting our mother to the freezing snow, denying her coat, money, and even a phone. Do you realize she had to walk six miles all the way here because she couldn't reach me? No one offered help because they thought she was a scammer. She had to face it all alone, all because of you. So what? I don't care about her that much. This house is mine, and I have the authority to decide who stays and who leaves. Don't blame me when she fails to fulfill her duties. She's nothing but a useless old lady. Whose house do you think it is? It is really your mother's property. And what in the world do you mean by her duties? Our mother has reached retirement age and she deserves to spend her golden years in happiness, surrounded by her loved ones. Not to be treated with such ingratitude and cruelty. Have you forgotten that our father, upon his death, left a will specifically stating that I would inherit the house? So, it's evident that I hold the reins here. In my house, I won't tolerate a worthless individual who only knows how to leech off others without giving anything in return. I provided her with food and shelter, and all she had to do was keep the house clean and take care of my wife. But you know what? She was repulsive and clumsy. Yesterday, while sewing a dress for my wife, she managed to burn it, driving your sister-in-law insane. What? Are you kidding me right now? You have our mother doing all the household chores and catering to your wife's needs? And now you're evicting her from her own home just because she ruined one dress? Well, you better tell me you're joking or I won't let this go. And what exactly do you think you can do about it? This house is mine. It belongs to me. No one can dictate me about what happens within my own territory. Let me jog your memory, Danny. This house is jointly owned by both of our parents. On paper, they each hold an equal share. While the will did mention dad giving you his share, it doesn't entitle you to the entirety of this property. Your actions can be easily construed as the crime of unlawfully seizing that which isn't rightfully yours. But aren't you under the illusion that our mother will ultimately give me her half anyway? If that's what you believe, then it's just a matter of time before this entire house becomes mine. Or perhaps you're dreaming that one day she'll bestow her share upon you. Wake up, Elizabeth. You're a married woman now, practically a stranger in her eyes. She'll never grant you the right to inherit anything. You're shameless, Danny. I never fathomed that I would have to confront my own brother like this. All I wanted was to seek justice for our mother. When did you become so heartless, treating her with such disdain just to please your wife? Remember, before being a husband, you must fulfill your duties as a son. Spare me your dramatics. What is it that you want? Let me make one thing clear. I will never allow her back into this house. This is my house. Today, I'll hire someone to clean up and toss all her belongings into the landfill. Her room will be transformed into my playroom. I'll install a pool table, a gaming console, and countless other things. I should have kicked her out ages ago. How dare you? I will report you to the police for trespassing and stealing my mother's possessions. And don't for a second think that I can stand idly by while I bring my mother back to that terrifying house. I will take her to my home, where she'll be safe and cherished. I'll swing by to retrieve her belongings and lock up half of the rooms in that house, as they rightfully belong to her. You have no right to use them. 
Are you really insane enough to do that? How dare you call the police on your own brother and sister-in-law over an elderly woman? Elisa, you can't act on your own accord. I've already made plans for those spare rooms. I've even placed orders for equipment. If you lock them up now, where am I supposed to put everything? Here's a proposition. I'll offer her a hundred dollars a month. No, no, maybe fifty dollars a month to rent the back half of the house. Fifty dollars? Is that how little you value your own mother? But it's not about the money. It's about how you treated her. Start showing her some respect and stop referring to her as a useless old lady. She's nearly 70 years old. We should be the ones taking care of her, not the other way around. Taking care of your wife and being treated like a servant. If you don't want to be around her, then talk to me and I'll find a way to take her in or explore nursing home options. There are better alternatives than resorting to such extreme measures. You suggest putting her in a nursing home? I don't have the funds for that. Do you even comprehend the exorbitant cost of accommodation and other expenses? With that money, I can take my wife shopping. Besides, you're already married and your husband wouldn't want the added burden of having your mother in your lives. I'm merely looking out for your well-being, which is why I refrain from bringing it up. Come on, kicking her out of the house is for the greater good of everyone involved. Don't assume that everyone is as selfish as you are. My husband is here, seething with anger at the way you've treated our mother. He respects her deeply and is elated that she'll be living with us. So remember, it wasn't you who expelled my mother from the house. It was I who took her out of that hellish place. Consider yourself fortunate that she still cares enough about you to prevent me from involving the police. But if you were my son, I would have put you behind bars without hesitation. <laughs> All right, have it your way. But don't you dare text me later, regretting the decision you're making today. I tried to warn you, but you didn't listen. It's better to have a fool like you carry the burden away from my family. Burden? You have the audacity to refer to the person who gave you life, took care of you from the time you were a helpless little baby until you had your own family as a burden? I just can't comprehend, Danny. When did you become such a heartless demon? Oh, come on. We all know it's her responsibility, something she has to do, or else she'll be breaking the law and end up in jail. She probably saw that my company was growing and that I had money, so she thought that she could get some from me. I see right through her. You, you're such a despicable jerk. If you have so much money, why don't you buy yourself a house and take over your mother's house like that? I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'll be stopping by tonight to collect my mother's belongings and lock the door. Why do I have to spend money to buy it when I can get it for free? Oh, that's too bad. My wife and I are going out tonight to celebrate because we finally got rid of that nuisance from our lives. You have only one hour to pick up for things or else I'll throw everything in the trash. <laughs> but I have to cook dinner for the kids and take care of mom. Today, my husband has to work overtime, so he won't be able to come home early. Can you just give me an extra hour? Absolutely not. It's either you come and take her things, or they meet their demise in the garbage. The choice is yours, Elizabeth. I will be there, and I will take what belongs to my mother. But know this, Danny. Your actions today have severed any remaining bond between us. You are no longer my brother. Hey, Alyssa. Ever regret spending so much money on that old lady? <laughs> Who is this? What? Is this Elizabeth's number? Yes, this is Elizabeth speaking. Who is texting me? Elizabeth, come on. This is just a joke, right? It's your brother, Danny! I'm sorry, but you seem to have the wrong number. I don't have any siblings. It's just me, my mother's only child. 
Cut it out now. This isn't funny. I just wanted to check on how mom is doing. Mom? Why are you suddenly concerned about her? You made it clear that you want nothing to do with her, didn't you? Don't tell me you're having second thoughts about how you treated her. It's too late for that, you know. Actions have consequences. Actually, you're right. I regret kicking her out of the house. You have no idea how much of a mess my house has become since she left. I've tried to handle everything on my own, but it's just a disaster. What does your messy house have to do with our mother? It's completely related. Ever since she left, there's been no one to clean the house, cook meals, or take care of the children. The house is constantly filled with toys and dirt, and no one wakes up in the middle of the night to change diapers or feed my one-year-old baby. And being a man, I struggle with those tasks, and my wife refuses to do them. For the past month, we've had to order food every day, and the house is constantly chaotic with a crying baby. Um, I still don't understand what that has to do with mom. If that's the case, why don't you hire a nanny or a maid? Aren't you wealthy enough for that? Don't you think that's a waste of money? Weren't those things done for me in the past without charge? What do you mean, Danny? Well, I mean, it's my fault for not considering these issues before kicking her out. But I need you to bring her back to my house every day to clean for us every day. Then, before my wife and I come home from work, you can take her back to your house. That way, everyone is happy. I have someone to clean the house for free, and you can still take care of her as you wish. Danny, are you serious right now? Are you incapable or unwell? Or is there a reason that you and your wife can't handle such basic responsibilities? Besides, you're extremely stingy. Instead of spending a little money to hire someone, you want everything for free? <laughs> Danny, don't ever contact me again if you're going to bring up these issues. R relax, I'm just kidding around. You know I didn't mean it that way. No, I'm not gonna let you brush this off. You've been treating mom like some servant, expecting her to clean up after you, cook for you, and take care of your children. She's not your maid, Danny. She's our mother. The woman who sacrificed everything for us. Look, I know I made a mistake kicking her out, but I need someone to take care of the house and help with the kids. So you think it's acceptable to exploit our mother for your convenience? Have you no shame? Instead of hiring help or taking responsibility as a husband and father, you want to burden our mother with these tasks? She deserves to enjoy her life, not be her personal servant. Don't contact me again unless it's to apologize and make a genuine change. Elizabeth, I need to talk to you. I've been doing some soul searching and I want to apologize for the way I've been treating mom. I can't believe I let my selfishness and anger cloud my judgment. She doesn't deserve to be treated that way and I regret it deeply. What brought about this sudden change of heart, Danny? I hope this isn't just another empty promise, or a ploy to manipulate the situation. I understand why you might be skeptical, but I assure you, this is a genuine realization. It hit me when I saw the chaos in my house, the absence of mom's love and care. I realized how much she meant to all of us, and how wrong I was to take her for granted. No, I can't trust you anymore after all the horrible things you did to my mom. Elizabeth. I understand that you have no trust in me, and I can't blame you after everything I've done, but I truly believe that I can change and make things right. I want to bring mom back to my house, not as a maid or a burden, but as a beloved mother who deserves care and respect. How can I trust that you won't revert to your old ways? That you won't treat her like a servant again? Your words alone are not enough, Danny. I need to see real change. Consistent actions that prove you've truly transformed. I know it won't be easy to regain your trust, and I don't expect it to happen overnight. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to prove myself. I'll do anything that will help me address my past behavior and ensure it never happens again. 
I want to become the son our mother deserves. Come on, Danny. I don't think you're ever going to overthink things, especially with a difficult, arrogant, and unwilling sister-in-law like that. She's the reason why I don't talk to you much anymore, when she always looks down on me when she meets my family. Elizabeth, I understand that you have issues with my wife, but let's not let that affect our relationship as siblings. I can't control how she behaves, but I can assure you that I won't let her come between us. It's not just about your wife, Danny. It's about how you've changed since you got married. You used to be caring, considerate, and always there for our family. But now, it feels like you're a completely different person. And it's not just because of her influence. I admit that things have changed since I got married, but that doesn't mean I love our family any less. I have responsibilities as a husband and father now, and I'm trying to balance everything as best as I can. I may have made mistakes, but that doesn't mean I've forgotten about you or mom. What's your real goal, Danny? I've had enough of your ridiculous lies. I don't have all day to waste on this. I know exactly what you're up to. Is it because your company is facing financial problems and is on the verge of bankruptcy? Are you trying to manipulate mom into giving you money to revive your failing business? What are you talking about? I don't understand. My company is still growing. In fact, I'm preparing to open a branch abroad and turn it into a multinational company. I want to bring mom back because I genuinely want to apologize to her. Oh, spare me the theatrics and the self-deception. Did you conveniently forget that my husband works at a bank? Coincidentally, it's the same bank where you applied for a home mortgage to borrow money. He informed me that your application hasn't been approved because you only own half of the house. If you want to secure the loan, you need mom's consent. That's why you're suddenly so eager to approach her, to manipulate her into giving you the right to inherit the house. Am I right? No, it can't be. How would your husband, just an ordinary teller, have access to that kind of information? Oh, you clearly haven't been paying attention to my life, have you? My husband has been promoted and is now the one who directly approves loan applications. He told me about your scheme last night. I knew you'd find a way to take that house, but I didn't expect you to act so soon. If so, so what? That house will belong to me sooner or later. I just need it a little sooner. So tell that old lady to transfer that house to me before I have to resort to drastic measures. Who said the house would belong to you? Actually, Mom told me that she wrote a will specifically excluding you from inheriting anything. She wants to ensure that you never benefit from her hard work and sacrifices. So don't you dare think you can manipulate her or lay a hand on our parents' house. That's a lie. You're just trying to sabotage me, aren't you? Mom would never cut me out of her will. I'm her son. Her blood. Oh, you think being her son gives you the right to mistreat her and then expect to inherit everything? You've shown no respect or gratitude towards her, and now you're desperate to secure your own future by exploiting her. Well, let me tell you something, Danny. Mom sees right through your lies and manipulation. She sees the true colors of the son she raised, and she wants nothing to do with you. You're just jealous, Elizabeth. Jealous that I've been successful while you've struggled. You can't stand to see me thrive, so you make up stories and try to ruin everything for me. Jealous? I couldn't care less about your success or wealth. What matters to me is how you treat our mother, the woman who sacrificed so much for us. You've become a heartless, selfish person who only cares about his own gain. Well, guess what? Mom sees through your facade and she's made her decision. This can't be happening. I need that house. I need the money. My company is on the verge of collapse. And if I don't find a solution, I'll lose everything. Your desperation is not my problem, Danny. You should have thought about the consequences of your actions before mistreating our mother. Now you're facing the consequences and you'll have to deal with them on your own. Don't you dare come near our mother or her property ever again. No, you don't understand. This is my last chance to save everything. I can't let my company go bankrupt and I can't lose everything I've worked so hard for. Please, Elizabeth, you have to help me convince mom to change her mind. I'll do anything. I'll make it up to her. I promise.
Danny's desperation grew as he realized that his pleas fell on deaf ears. With the company on the verge of bankruptcy and the debt collectors closing in, he was left with no choice but to face the harsh reality of his actions. Unable to repay his debts, the loan sharks unleashed their wrath upon Danny and his family. Their peaceful home turned into a nightmare as they were tormented by constant threats and violence. The once prosperous life they had built crumbled before their eyes. Despite my initial reluctance, I couldn't ignore the plight of my brother and the desperate situation he found himself in. After careful consideration, I made a bold decision. I approached Danny with an offer that could potentially change the course of their lives. I offered to buy his half of the house, providing him with the much needed financial relief to pay the shark loan while also ensuring my mother's security. The transaction took place and the house was now solely under my ownership and Danny and his wife had to move into a small, crappy apartment. After I purchased Danny's half of the house, a new chapter began for me and my family. With the house now solely in my name, I decided to move my family back into my childhood home. It was a symbolic step, reclaiming the place that held cherished memories and offering a fresh start for my mother, myself, and my own family. My mother, having made the decision to leave the past behind, focused on rebuilding her life with the love and care she deserved. She found comfort in my embrace and lived a peaceful and fulfilling life surrounded by loved ones.